scatter plots and trend lines. I know you've seen scatter plots before. You probably have also seen trend lines. This is what we're going to focus on today. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to create and interpret scatter plots and also use a trend line to make predictions and identify the correlation within the uh, relationship. So copy down your target. And for the warm up, I want you to graph um, the number of species added to the list of endangered and threatened species in the United States over the years um, in the past. I did adjust the table a little bit, so if you could change the value for 2001 to say 38, and for 2002 to say 23, that would be great. So go ahead and make those changes, copy down your target, and we'll graph this together. Or you can graph it and then compare it to mine, but make those changes first. Go ahead and pause. So now that you've uh, copied on your target, we can graph this together. If you've already graphed it, you can just check over it with me. Number one, make sure you always have a title for your graph. So what are we showing? We're showing the endangered species added each year. or over time or something. Don't just write endangered species because we're talking about the endangered species added to the list. Time always goes across the x-axis. Just get used to it always being there. And you could start at 96 because that's when our, our um, table starts. Another way of doing this, one way is putting the years. Another way of doing this is putting years since 1996, okay? Doesn't matter which way you want to do it. I'm just going to put the calendar year down here, but then my label on the x-axis will say calendar year. My y-axis then is going to be the number of species added And I need to go up to 91. 91 is my highest value, and 11 is my lowest value. So I'm probably going to count by tens here. That seems pretty appropriate. 10, 20, 30, and so on. That way you'll get all the way up to over 90, um, get all the way up to 91. So when you graph these points, you're just graphing them as an ordered pair. In 1996, it was a 91. In 1997, it was at 79. In 98, 62. 99, 11. Low year there. 2000, it was 39. 2001, it was, sorry, we made these changes. This is actually 38, and this is 23. So 2001, it's 38. And 2002, it's 23. So there's your scatter plot. A scatter plot is just individual points. We do not connect them. We don't draw line segments connecting them. And we're not even drawing in a trend line quite yet. So this is your graph, okay? This is your scatter plot. When you graph a scatter plot, you're just going to have points. I'm going to take a picture of my scatter plot because we are going to use this later. Okay, so correlation. Correlation describes the relationship between two data sets. How are they related? So you have three different options. A positive correlation, you need to write this down, is where both of the data sets increase with each other. So maybe you have something like the more servings of cheeseburgers you eat, the um, more calories you take it in that day. Or the further you've run, the longer the time has been. Um, both data sets increase together, the relationship can be stronger or weaker. So notice the strong points are clustered closer together. They're closer to a line. Whereas the weak relationship is going to be more spread out, but it's still generally increasing from left to right. One data set increases, so does the other. So small x value, small y value. Larger x value, higher y value. Negative correlation, then, is where one value increases and the other decreases. So notice in this graph, if I talk about this point, this has a small x value and a high y value. 
And as I go over, my x value is increasing, but my y value is decreasing. If we go even farther over, my x value is really large, my y value is small. Okay, so that's a negative correlation. Um, again, relationship can be strong or mod or weak or moderate. So look at compare those graphs. Notice the strong ones are really close to a line. Weak is a little more spread out. Moderate is kind of somewhere in between there. And then no relationship, no correlation. You don't see anything that exists there. There's no relationship. It's kind of all over the place. That you can classify as just no relationship or no correlation. So if I gave you a graph and I asked you to describe the correlation, you should be able to use, describe it using positive or negative and also even using maybe strong or weak um, as well. So A, what kind of correlation do you see here? If you notice the x value at this point, pick a point, x value is low, y value is high. As you go to another point, the x value gets higher, but the y value gets lower. So generally, we have a negative correlation. Would you classify this as strong? Not really. Not really too weak, maybe right in the middle. So you could say a moderate negative, or you could just say negative. For B, what kind of correlation do you see here? Look at the graph, rate it from left to right. We are increasing. As x increases, so does y, so this is a positive correlation. You might say this is a strong positive correlation because there's a lot of points clustered together, okay? You could also describe the correlation given a situation, so not given the graph, but given words. Let's think about these situations. What kind of correlation would we expect to see? The number of people in an audience and the ticket sales. Let's think about that. The number of people in the audience and the ticket sales. You know, sometimes people buy a ticket, but they don't go. Think about the Steeler games. It might be sold out, but there's still empty seats. Or uh, maybe you buy tickets to a show, but then you, all of a sudden your plans change. But overall, what's going to be the relationship? The more tickets you sell, probably going to have more people in the audience, right? If I sell maybe 10 tickets, I might have around 10 people, maybe 9, maybe 8. If I sell 100 tickets, I might have, you know, 70 or 80 or 90 showing up. The more tickets you sell, the more people are going to show. So that would be what type of relationship? Positive. So that's a positive correlation. Okay, what about the next one? The number of pets a person owns and the number of books that a person read last year. Let's think about polling the whole world or polling or doing a survey all across the United States. Do you think you would see a relationship between the number of pets a person owns and the number of books that a person reads? I'm thinking these two things don't really sound related. You know, a pet owner might own some pet books, but overall, there's a lot of people who read a lot that don't have pets, and there's people who have pets and do read a lot. So I think this would be a no correlation. Those two things do not seem to be related. We would have to do a survey to really check it out and see. Maybe there is a relationship, but I'm thinking there's not going to be one. And the last one, a runner's time and the distance left to the finish line. So think about it as the runner's time and the distance left to the finish line. Well, when you start a race, you've been running for zero amount of time, you have the full distance to go. Let's say you're running a half marathon. So at the beginning of time, you have 13.1 miles. After you've ran about 30 minutes, you might only have nine miles left. After you run an hour, you might only have five miles left or something like that. So the trend is going to be what type of correlation, positive or negative? This one's going to be negative. The longer you run, the less distance you have left to go. So one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. You'll try a few more of those on your own as well. The last part then about this lesson is using a trend line. The trend line shows the correlation between data sets more clearly. It also can be helpful when making predictions. So we're going to approximate our trend line we don't have an exact method for this, but I'm going to get our graph from the warm-up first. So now I have our graph from the warm-up. You can flip back to your warm-up page. Just flip back to the chart at the beginning of these notes. We want to plot a line of best fit. 
a line of best fit, you want it to be as you want it to be as close to all of the points as possible. So here's some things you might want to you may want to jot down. I would have about the same number of points above and below the line. I would have about the same number of points above and below the line. Now again, these are these don't all have to be true, but that's kind of one way of lining up your line. Another thing to think about is have it um, have most of the points in close proximity. Have most of the points in close proximity. So when I plot a line, a trend line, or a line of best fit, I really try to think of each point pulling at the line, and each point has to pull its own weight. So, you know, every point is going to affect where you draw that line. This is ju these are just a couple general ideas. They don't always have to be true, okay? So sometimes I try to think about having the same number of points above and below the line, but that's not always the best case. I definitely try to have most or all of the points in close proximity of the line. Sometimes you have a little bit of an outlier, one point that's a little different than the others. So let's draw in a trend line on your warm-up scatter plot. Again, we want every point to pull at this line. I'm going to draw in just a quick segment, and then we can kind of discuss where we think this should be, should be and we can move it around. So you can even just watch this for now um, and play around with it before drawing in yours. When you draw in a line, you want it to be as close to all of the points as possible. So when you think about that, if I put the line here, I'm pretty far away from a lot of the points. I want all of the points to have a pull in this line, but I'm thinking that I should draw this line closer to all of these points. So if you get the line up here maybe, all of those points are really, really close to that line, but do remember that you have this one point out there, and that one little guy is going to pull at that line too. So we need to let that point pull its own weight. The trend line is going to be as close to as many points as possible, but every point's going to affect it, so maybe it tips the line over just a little bit closer to it. Now notice on this, if I leave my trend line here, I don't have the same number of points above or below the line, but I kind of think about the distance. I think about, okay, this little distance added up between this little distance and added up to this little distance and this one, would that be about the same distance to get to that point? Um, overall, if every point is pulling on that line, the line is going to shift down a little bit more because of this one. I think this trend line is pretty good. It could be anywhere in there, but you want to let each point pull that line. We can do this on a graphing calculator to get the exact trend line, but we're just approximating it at this point. So plot your trend line on the warm-up. I think this looks pretty good. Um, yours should be somewhere in the general vicinity. Again, I wouldn't put it you know, over here like this because that's pretty far away from a lot of these points now. Um, at least with the line being up closer to those, it's pretty close to that data. And again, this point's probably pulling at that a little bit. In this case, it doesn't make sense for my trend line to have arrows because I can't have a negative number of species down here and I can't have a negative number of years over here. But if your trend line was going to be a positive correlation and going on that way, you may want an arrow if it's showing that the trend continues. So keep that in mind. So for this example, my trend line does not make sense to go on, but in other examples it can. The last thing I talked about then is using your trend line to make a prediction. So when will there be no species left added or added to the endangered list? So in my case, when will there be no species, that's zero, when is that zero going to hit your line? In what year? That year looks to be about 2002, 2003, 2004. So trace over from your trend line to use the prediction. Trace over from the axes to the trend line to predict for the future events. You should feel pretty good with that target right about now.